On the eastern shores of Southern Africa lies a country of huge contrasts. Though often fertile and with many natural resources, Mozambique remains one of the poorest countries in Africa. A history of colonialism and civil war has left two-thirds of its population living in poverty. Mozambique is a land of farmers. Most of its people depend on agriculture. Though economic growth has expanded its cities, rural areas still suffer from inadequate development. Therefore, almost annual droughts and floods shatter the livelihoods of millions of people. Countless numbers are forced to depend on food aid. As a result of all these factors, malnutrition and especially vitamin A deficiency is rampant among children and other vulnerable people, a major reason why the country is struggling to improve. In the mid-1990s, as part of the Mozambican government's fight to find solutions, a group of dedicated scientists, including local partners and colleagues from the National Agricultural Research Institute, got together to address the problem. They came up with an idea, an idea that would bring a cheap but potent food crop into the country to combat hunger and malnutrition. Then in 2000, a natural disaster of gigantic proportions took everything away from hundreds of thousands of people. Though underfunded, the urgency of the situation forced the small team of scientists to make bigger plans. But the job of reaching millions of hungry people would require far more than science. Malnutrition is a large problem in sub-Saharan Africa. In Mozambique, where many can't afford balanced diets, there are some of the worst vitamin A deficiency and malnutrition rates in the area. Vitamin A deficiency reduces disease resistance, leads to stunting and blindness, and is a major factor holding back national development. The government and many other organizations have tried for years to improve this situation. Short-term answers included an intensive vitamin A capsules distribution scheme, but the ideal would be to find an approach that would remove the root cause. Scientists and their local partners knew that traditional diets would have to change if children were going to raise their vitamin A intake. As part of a wider plan to improve diets, it was decided that a new crop should be brought for trials to Mozambique in 1997. It was the orange-fleshed sweet potato. Orange-fleshed sweet potato is easy to grow, produces more food per square meter than other major staple crops, and its bright orange is a sign of its high vitamin A content. It can grow on less fertile soils, making it ideal for distribution to very poor and disaster-affected families. Over a hundred clones of orange flesh sweet potato was introduced into Mozambique for evaluation in collaboration with the National Research Institute. These clones of sweet potato went under adaptive trials, but we did not have money to undertake the trials over all sites in Mozambique. By 2000, with little funding but the support of the government, 
they had selected eight varieties that would not only flourish in the varied Mozambique conditions, but also contained highest possible levels of the vitamins and energy that the people so desperately needed. That same year, abnormally bad floods devastated the country. The flood waters are still rising. Much of Mozambique has simply disappeared. No one really knows how many people have drowned. Hundreds of thousands of people lost everything, including any way to make money. The team of scientists believed their orange fleshed potato varieties could help. They knew their project was small and the task was huge. Through wide-ranging consultations and talks, they managed to secure funding and were able to begin distributing sweet potato vines. <laughs> By the end of 2001, the researchers and their partners had yeah. given out the vines to 121,000 households, helping families become self-sufficient by growing crops again, while also improving diets. This was a real success. It proved the team's belief that the crop should be distributed countrywide. But to make orange-fleshed sweet potato a sustainable part of everyone's lives, they would have to achieve three things. The first was to inspire a whole population to adopt a new food. Orange-fleshed sweet potato would have to replace the commonly grown white-fleshed varieties that lacked vitamin A. The second objective was to teach people the importance of vitamin A in orange-fleshed sweet potatoes and other foods, as well as how to cook and prepare the new crop so that they would want to change the way they fed their families. The third was to generate a customer demand for sweet potatoes in a country where there was none at all. By generating a demand for orange-fleshed sweet potato, the market chain would be complete. Farmers would want to grow a crop they could make money from. To achieve such huge goals, a wide range of new skills were needed. The scientists began to team up with partners from outside the normal scientific framework, including over 20 local and international non-governmental organizations and public sector groups. Key to their joint plan was the creation of an orange brand that would turn what seemed like a plain sweet potato into a commodity that was not only acceptable, but desirable. The orange fleshed sweet potato project exploded into a splash of color. Radio programs and theater. Orange clothes and orange painted market stalls were all used to give the message that the orange of the new potatoes was good, was the color of health, and tasted sweet and delicious. Farmer and community groups were mobilized. They introduced people to the new food crop, demonstrated recipes, and trained women as nutrition promoters because they had a direct influence upon the whole family's diet.
The messages about how to prepare and get the most from orange fleshed sweet potato and other vitamin A rich foods were being passed on. People start to do like porridge with orange fleshed sweet potato, enriched with peanuts, with coconuts and uh, beans and uh, green leaves. Encouraging women to exclusively breastfeed children for the first six months was also part of the plan, since a major aim was to improve nutrition for the under twos. <laughs> the team's research shows that children who regularly eat orange-fleshed sweet potato as part of an overall improved nutrition scheme get eight times more vitamin A than those that do not. This better diet significantly lowers the number of cases of vitamin A deficiency and so helps fight malnutrition. Nali ndi mwananga uyu amatupirana. Ndiye anandika kuti mudzicha ndolira mudzipika mudzimpasa azidia ulangizi wa mbrata dose. Ndiye tinaza sadya kumalima ati phuzisa kupika mapau kuti yembata hi ndiyabwino. Village promoters were trained to pass on ways to store sweet potato roots so that people could have a supply of vitamin A for as much of the year as possible. <laughs> the orange brand proved a powerful tool that helped people remember the message that orange fleshed sweet potato is healthy and contains vitamin A. <laughs> Another challenge was getting sufficient quantities of quality planting material out to farmers. Maria Andrade, her team, and partners from the Agricultural Research Institute of Mozambique organized the production of disease-free plants, trained local technicians, and set up sites to produce vines across much of the country. At the same time, the project had to begin identifying and training the smallholders who would grow and sell vines and seeds, as well as sweet potatoes. An important part of this process was spreading information about the benefits of the new crop. In terms of land and in terms of productivity, we are much better off producing orange flesh sweet potato than any other crops. Orange fleshed sweet potato needs little watering, can grow on even marginal soils, and produces more per square meter than other staples. So for the tour, the batata de bol paranjada. Eu esperei a esperar na parte de mandioca e produz milho, dinheiro só tirava do milho. Eu não pegava uma galinha em casa vender para ver sabão da casa. Mas é assim que temos batata. Não é preciso pegar galinha vender não. Só cavo batata, vender, sem pegar galinha. Creating a new market for orange-fleshed sweet potatoes was another huge challenge and a very unusual one for a plant breeding project. However, the team knew they had to design novel ways of selling if they were going to generate a demand. <laughs> Traders were trained to give customers information about the vitamin A content of the new sweet potato, as well as to run their small businesses. Space was rented in markets and raised platforms were built to lift the selling process from its usual place on the ground. The opportunity to supply a growing number of outlets convinced more and more male farmers that they could profit from a crop that had always been associated with women. <laughs> At 
As part of an ever-growing range of orange-fleshed sweet potato products, a new enriched bread was also introduced. Bread is a staple in Mozambique. Demand for the more substantial and tastier golden bread, which replaces 38% of wheat flour with cooked orange-fleshed sweet potato, is growing. This pan has its own flavor. É diferente do material e aplicado tudo. E com certeza tornei a voltar a comprar o pão de ouro aqui nessa padaria. Dias antes, essas culturas eram tidas como cultura de pobre. Essas culturas estão a ganhar o lugar requerido no circuito mercantil. Hoje em dia aparecem em grandes supermercados. The introduction of the new food crop is having impact nationally. We can say that the government is gaining a lot because farmers have a new opportunity to raise their income. And the concern of the government is actual production, food production, and the sweet potato is part of this, of this strategy for food production. It's a golden crop, I would say. Recent research is also touching on topics that are going to affect the whole of Africa, such as drought. Parts of Zambezia have some of the poorest soils and the poorest people in the country. We felt if we could demonstrate impact in this area, it would work anywhere that sweet potato will grow. Uh -huh. They are multiplying herdy strains and helping national partners set up systems to continue their production into the future. More drought-resistant orange-fleshed sweet potato should be ready by the end of 2009. The International Potato Center and partners are committed to the development and promotion of orange-fleshed sweet potatoes to help combat malnutrition. The Vitamin A for Africa initiative launched in 2001, now has 11 countries working on developing orange-fleshed sweet potato varieties. It is a lead crop in the Harvest Plus biofortification initiative. Introducing a new crop to change dietary habits can have a very long-lasting impact. To me, it epitomizes the best kind of development program, and it's very much an intervention that can be scaled up. The orange revolution is moving into the future. Batata doce, batata doce.